Hi there. My name is Nancy Lowen. I'm a children's book author in St. Paul. Um, over the years, I've written a lot of children's books, um, probably more than 140. Um, this is my most recent one. It's called The Everybody Club. And I wrote this with my friend Linda Hayen. And the story is based on a real life everybody club that Linda's daughter started when she was little. Um, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here today because Dr. Artika Tyner, who founded Planting People, Growing Justice, um, she asked me if I would talk about writing fiction and share my thoughts about that with middle school readers and writers. So that is why I'm here. I'm so glad for this opportunity. Um, I really do believe that we all have something important to say and we all deserve to be heard. So let's jump in and I'm gonna try to share my PowerPoint here and I sure hope it works. All right, so what are the main elements of a story? Now, some of this stuff you probably have had in school before, but it doesn't hurt to review. So we're gonna talk about some of these main elements first, and then I'm gonna give you some ideas about how you can get started writing your own stories. So the main elements, character. We're gonna start with characters because if we don't have characters, then we don't really have a story, right? We've got to have somebody doing something, right? So in a character, you know, a lot of the time characters are people, um, but it doesn't have, they don't have to be people, right? They, we could, as long as it's something that the writer can, can give a consciousness, you know, some something that can take action and that can interact with the world and have you know, an inner life of some kind, um, that can be a character. So there are lots of opportunities um, for creativity, just, just in terms of, of establishing, you know, what your character is going to be. Um, another important element of story is setting. And by this, we mean where and when does a story take place? In some stories, setting is really important. Um, in other stories, it maybe doesn't matter so much, but um, it's just something that, that you need to keep in the back of your mind um, in order to make your story um, what you want it to be. Um, now we come to plot. Now plot, that's, that consists of the events that happen in a story. So we've got characters and the characters have to be somewhere and they have to exist in some time, right? and something has to happen. But is that necessarily a story? It might not be, because if it's just something happened, something happened, something happened, then you know we might say, well, so what? <laughs> um, what we need to make it a story is conflict. I kind of get a kick out of this picture. This is something, uh, my daughter just got a dog actually, and that is her hair. <laughs> so I'd say there's a little bit of conflict going on there, right? We want some problem to be solved. We want uh, there to be some obstacle. The characters have to uh, face some kind of challenge so that when we get to the other side of the story, when we're all done, we feel a sense of satisfaction that whatever problem was in the story has been solved. Okay, so a couple of other elements of story are point of view and theme. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about those later. Okay, so you know all that stuff, what goes into a story, how do you get started? Well, there are lots and lots and lots of ways. That's the cool thing about writing and really about any creative undertaking. Um, there is no one right way to do it. Everybody needs to find their own process, their own way of doing it. Um, so there's a lot of freedom and a lot of flexibility in writing. And I think that's pretty cool. So I'm just gonna give you some ideas here. Um, one way that uh, stories can start, you know, I mean, 
If you're looking for ideas and you don't know where to start, one thing you can do is think about a character. Um, you might want to base your story on like, maybe there's like a real person that you are interested in and would want to know more about and would want to come up with a story to put that person in. Um, you might want to write about a robotic spider. Who knows? Or some little like space alien slash robot with a flower. That's okay too. Maybe a superhero. Um, you know, stories can be even like, you know, like graphic novel type characters, right? Those are those are characters as well. Um, whatever you can think of, it, it, it's um, it, it's one way. Sometimes you're you're just you really are fascinated with a certain character, and that's the point where you want to start, and that works. Okay, but you probably don't want to just jump in too quickly here. Um, when you're creating a character, you're probably going to want to create like a character sketch. Now, you might not put everything that you come up with about this character into your story, but just knowing your character really well is going to help you develop a better story. So there are three areas that... that um, you can consider when you are creating a character. Uh, one is life facts. These are just the basic things. Name, gender, age. What does that character look like? Where does that character live? Um, does that character go to school or work? Um, family life. So for example, um, a character who uh, lives with one grandparent it's going to be very different or have very different life experiences than a character who lives with, you know, huge extended family. So that will influence how that character interacts with the world. Um, important events, maybe, like did that character move or, you know, to a different location? Did that character maybe have somebody important die? Uh, did that character character gets sick or get into an accident or something like that? Did the character win some great big huge competition of some kind? So those are important things that you know that would shape a character like life facts. And then we've got character traits. These are you know kind of like a personality, right? What what a character likes, dislikes, any little quirks, idiosyncrasies, uh, for example, let's think about a character who loves the outdoors. Anything to do with the outdoors, that character is there. Character knows all the names of the birds and maybe collects insects and knows all those names too. And, you know, just has no problem like catching snakes with bare hands, things like that. Um, that, that, that would be, you know, an interesting thing that you could um, a character trait that would be interesting in a story. Maybe dislikes, things that a, a character really dislikes. Um, let's see. Um, I had an example here. Well, that's not really important. You can think of your own, dis, you know, things that a character might really dislike. Um, but another thing you might want to consider too is um, personality traits like, is this character really outgoing or shy or maybe sneaky or like really sensitive or something like that? Those are things to consider as well. And then we've got inner life, like dreams, fears, other feelings, maybe important relationships. Maybe there's a best friend or a special aunt or uncle, uh, maybe sibling rivalry is really big in that character's life. Those are things that are also um, worth considering when you're developing a character. So, and so why do we wanna go to all this trouble of thinking through, you know, these things about a character? Because that might lead you to a story. So if you think about this character, what kinds of problems might this character have? Remember, we need to have conflict or problems, obstacles, if we're going to have a story. So if you know the character, 
then you might have a better idea of what kinds of problems that character might have. And that could be the starting point. Another way to um, frame this maybe is what does this character want? You know, what does this character want more than anything? And what is keeping this character from getting what the character wants? Okay, so now we're going on to plot. Now we know that plot is consists of the events uh, in a story. But when you're, you're just starting out, you might not be able to think of all the events. That's maybe a little premature, but you can think about something like the premise or, or just like a situation that you find interesting and maybe want to explore more. Like, um, let's say, what would happen if somebody came up with, um, robots that could shovel snow you know we just had a big uh, snowstorm here and um, I spent a lot of time shoveling the last couple of days and um, somebody posted on on social media something well you know we've got all these robots doing other things why don't we have some robots that are um, shoveling snow and I thought hey you know that's right so that would be a very interesting premise right um or maybe, uh, let's see, another example would be, maybe there's like some species of bird or like toad or something like that. All of a sudden it, it starts reproducing at this enormous pace and suddenly we're just like overrun with this bird or this, you know, these toads, it's just everywhere. It's like, huh, what would happen in that situation? So in that case, you know, we don't have a character yet, um, but we've got a premise. And from that, maybe we can figure out, well, who is going to be in this story? How is it going to work? So these are all just starting places. Remember, you might want to start with setting. So uh, setting, of course, is where and when. Um, I like this picture here. This was actually in my dad's slides. So this is a real picture from, well, I don't know, probably at least, at least 60 years ago, I would bet, something like that. And it with the coloring of the slide and everything, I mean, it looks like it's on Mars, right? Well, what's a car doing on Mars? Well, it's not on Mars, it's just a desert. And this is like a rest stop in the desert. These are little picnic areas. And, um, it's pretty bleak, right? A bleak environment. But what kind of thing could happen in an environment like that? Um, in this picture here, the light is really important. We've got these long, long shadows that might give you the seed of an idea for a story, right? Um, you know, city buildings here. You've got all these windows that look exactly alike. You know, what? How do these people who live here interact with each other? You know, what, what happens if somebody, you know, hangs some, some um, really strange banner or something out, out of the window? Or if somebody is looking across the street and sees something really mysterious, you know, something like that. Um, this one is probably one of my favorites. So this picture here. Um, is taken in my hometown of Mountain Lake, which is in southern Minnesota. It's a really small town, only about 2,000 people. And when I was growing up, there was this enormous greenhouse complex. There, they, you know, the greenhouse, they grew lots and lots of flowers. You know, in the spring, when people planted their gardens, this is where they would go. They would go get their you know, their petunias and their geraniums and their squash and all that stuff, you know, at this place. Um, but the owners died a long time ago and the children never took it over and the city hasn't done anything with it. So we've got this greenhouse that's just like slowly decaying and, and overrun with, you know, vegetation, you know, growth, grass, trees, even, you know, in the, in the middle of all these, these buildings. And um, I would sometimes walk there and be really creeped out. And I've always thought hmm, that would be kind of an interesting idea for a scary story. 
Um, so, and then time, of course, and we haven't talked about that much here, but, you know, something that takes place, um, you know, in the future, something that takes place like current times, maybe something that takes place, you know, way back when you can, you can write a story about the prehistoric era. You can write anything you want. So lots of flexibility. You're, the only limit is your imagination. Okay, so another way that we can get ideas is to observe, just to like pay attention to the little things that you see, you know, on a daily basis. It's, it's hardly a day that goes by that I don't notice something that's like, oh, that's kind of unusual. It's a good idea to keep a journal for those kinds of things. Um, that's why I like taking pictures with my phone, too, because it helps me record. It helps me remember some of these things that I might otherwise forget if I don't write it down. But anyway, I'm going to share these with you here. So this is one um, my cat knocked over a mirror and it all it broke. And I just thought it looked kind of cool, all those fragmented pieces. And then I got to thinking, hmm, maybe a story, right? What if it's a cursed mirror or a magic mirror of some kind? Um, what if like anything that's reflected in that broken mirror is affected in some way, maybe broken in some way? Or maybe, maybe this whole mirror is discarded, but there's like this one piece that got left behind. And maybe there's something weird about that piece or it affects people in some way. That could be the starting point of a story. This one here, uh, this is uh, a squirrel was trying to get into my bedroom this summer. I heard a noise and I looked out and there he was. He was trying to, he was almost like chewing on the little plastic thing, you know, that goes between the air conditioner and the window. And he was really insistent. And they're actually there for a while. He, he kind of um, rested, you know, on the, the ledge beneath the, the, the air conditioner and the windowsill. It was really kind of sweet, actually. He, he was hanging out. He, he wanted to be my friend, I think. Um, either that or he wanted to get into my house and, and um, fight with Reggie. I don't know, my cat. But, um, but so that could be the starting point of a story. Like what would happen if a squirrel got into my place, right? What, what kind of, what would my cat do? What would the squirrel do? What if the squirrel and the cat became friends? you know or what if they tore each other apart right um what if the squirrel got to know reggie and then went out again and told all the other squirrels right but there's lots of possibilities just with something something um simple like that okay and this is another fun one uh this so i just took this one a little while ago just after christmas so i was visiting my mom in Mountain Lake. Um, she lives in senior apartments and the building used to be the hospital. It's actually the hospital where I was born, but there are all these, you know, people who live there store all sorts of things, you know, in this big open basement. There's like chairs and tables and, you know, couches, filing cabinets, all sorts of things. And I was down there with my mom and what did I see? I saw a knight. <laughs> it was really kind of spooky. The automatic lights went on. So I took the picture, there's this light on, but when I first saw it, everything was dim. And I just saw this, this night kind of looming in the shadows and it was just wild. But there's gotta be a story there, right? So I think that that might be a good starting point too. Another thing you can do is to tell an existing story in a new way. You don't have to start from scratch if you don't want to. You could take something that is already out there and adapt it, make it your own. Um, one way that a lot of um, students like to, to do this is to take like fairy tales or fables or myths um, and and tell those in their own way, but you don't have to be limited by those. You could take 
movies, TV shows, songs, um, videos, even you could even take like your own real life stories or maybe stories that you've heard, you know, your family members talk about or your friends or your friends' families. Um, fictionalize them you know you you start with start with the basic idea of it and then make it your own and and here's some things you can do you can change the setting the time or the place you can give characters different reasons for doing the things that they do you can tell the story from a different character's point of view again we're going to talk about that more in a bit you could add new characters take away characters you can do a lot of things. Um, this is an example of a book that I wrote. Um, it's, it tells the story of the, the myth, um, Cyclops and Odysseus. Um, the Cyclops is this big one-eyed monster and um, he, ate, he ate Odysseus's men. Um, Odysseus barely escaped. He, he, had to, he tricked the Cyclops and, and escaped with some of his men anyway. But so I was given the assignment of writing this story from the point of view of the Cyclops. And I came up with something, you know, entirely, entirely different. Um, and I think it, it, it worked. So the Cyclops ate these men because, because he wanted to be human and travel the world and do all the things that people do. Um, and he'd been told you are what you eat and he wanted to become human. So he started eating humans. It was a terrible misunderstanding. But so that's just an example of, of how you might approach um, using an existing story to make a new story of your own. Now, sometimes people like to start with themes. So theme is an underlying message, a big idea behind a story. Um, themes are, are big kind of abstract ideas, important ideas like justice, courage, family, friendship, compassion, cooperation. And these are just some, you know, there are all, all sorts of big important ideas that stories might want to uh, or might convey. Um, so often we don't start with theme. Often what, what usually happens is we write something and then kind of the theme emerges and then we kind of hone it. You know, we bring it out a little bit more maybe. Um, that's how it usually works, but it's certainly possible to start with a theme, to start with some big idea like this and then take it from there. Then, you know, then maybe come up with your setting or your characters or your premise, something like that. Um, so what usually happens though, you know, we've kind of divided these things all out kind of neatly organized, right? Often doesn't work like that. What you wanna do is, often you're, you're gonna kind of combine approaches. Like you might start out with, with a premise and then characters, you might start out with setting and then premise and then characters. You might start out with character and then setting and then, you know, and so forth. Um, however, it works and you can do whatever you would like. That's the fun of it. Okay, so you have an idea. That is great. Now what? Um, sometimes writers get a little bit scared of the blank page. You might be worried that you'll never be able to do it. You know, you're, you're not going to be able to write anything good. No one's going to like it. You know, it's going to take you forever. Um, you know what? We, we all go through that or maybe not everybody, but I would say the majority of people have that little bit of anxiety or fear before you start writing a story. But you know what? The thing to do is just accept it. It's okay. It's okay to feel that way. And you will get to where you want to go. Okay. It just, 
um, it's, it's, it is going to be a little bit of work. It's not, you know, it's not all easy, but it is very satisfying. So uh, let's keep going here. So maybe you are one of those lucky people who can just dive right in. So you have an idea and you're just going to sit and write it all out. And it comes out, you know, pretty much the way you want it to. Uh, good for you. <laughs> you're lucky if you can work that way. I know that I can't, but I know that a lot of people can, and especially younger, younger folks. Um, sometimes I give workshops to students a little bit younger than you are, and I'm just always blown away by all, all the things that they can imagine and how they can write so quickly. Um, it's, it's wonderful. So that is certainly, if that's the way you want to work, then you go ahead and do that. Um, but if you aren't quite sure how to get started, um, here is another way that's maybe a little bit, um, it kind of eases you into the story writing process a little bit. And that's brainstorming. Um, brain, in brainstorming, you write down everything you can think of. And you don't judge your ideas. That's really important. The idea is just to get everything out there. Don't hold back. If you hold back, you know, or if you're critical of your ideas, um, you might miss out on something, you know, you, you want to keep things loose, let those ideas out there. Then, you know, when you, you know, you, you've, you, the well is run dry, you know, you've thought of all these ideas, then look at your ideas and decide which ones you want to keep exploring. See which, which ideas have a little more energy or the ones that you just think you'd be really excited to write about. So those are the ones that you look for. And then you might want to do another round or two of brainstorming. So it's like you kind of brainstorm for your main idea, then you get your main idea and brainstorm for what happens, then keep those ideas and maybe do it another time. So that can be a really um, good way to do it. And when you are brainstorming, I just want to add this because I think it's important. You don't have to write in sentences. You know, you can just write just words, just little reminders to, to let you um, remember what you were thinking about. Nobody is going to read this. Nobody cares. <laughs> you know, just, just get your ideas down in whatever form that you can. All right. So another way, and you might do this like at the outset, or you, maybe this would be something that you would do after the brainstorming, um, is write an outline. Now you've maybe done outlines in school and they have to be done in a very particular way. Um, at least maybe they don't do that anymore. I don't know. I, I remember having to do that as a kid and I didn't really like it that much, but you don't have to do it in a very formal way. You can just make the kind of outline that you want to make. So this outline is just for you. Just list the events in your story in the order in which they occur. And you can add lots of detail if you want, or you can keep it really simple if you would like. Um, and then that, that will give you, you know, a sense of direction, kind of like a map you know, so for when you're writing, then you, you won't get lost, you'll, you'll kind of know where you are heading. Um, and then here is a tip too. So if you're thinking about events in your story, you might want to think of those as scenes. And so imagine you are filming your story, what would the camera see? Um, I think that can be a really effective way. And it's it's something that you can do not just when you're writing an outline, but you know, throughout any part of this process. Um, so often we think that, you know, it, it has to go really fast between our brain and our hands or our keyboards or whatever, but it doesn't always have to sometimes 
when we get stuck with our writing, sometimes it's because we're not really fully visualizing it. So maybe we have to imagine it a little bit more before we put the words on the page. Um, so it is perfectly fine to just sit still and not do anything and just think about your story. Um, that I think that's a really valid approach. And I feel like it's kind of overlooked sometimes. I think like in school, you're probably always having to do things in a hurry. You're not really giving them much time to just sit and think about what you want to do. But just that, that um, you know, that kind of quiet, empty space where your mind is just you know, your brain is kind of doing its own thing. You know, you're coming up with things, uh, maybe almost like on an, on, in an unconscious level. Um, that's, you know, a really super important part of the creative process too. Um, but, okay, so going back to the scenes here. Um, so it is helpful to think of, you know, think of what a camera would see. But I just want to remind you that not everything in your story needs to be in a scene because you might have parts of your story that are more about what a character is thinking and feeling, um, maybe a memory, something like that. Um, so um, not everything is gonna be a scene, but imagining and outlining scenes, yeah, it's a good way to get started. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about point of view. Um, so what that is about is the question of who is narrating or telling the story? Through whose eyes do we see the events of the story? Um, and I just want to say first that you might not know the point of view when you're just starting out. Just write whatever seems to come naturally to you, and you can always change it up later, you can make this decision formally, you know, later, but it's something that you might want to consider um, now too. So I'm just going to share about it now. Okay, so first person is a really, really common point of view. I imagine if you're middle grade students and you are reading middle grade novels, I would bet most of those are going to be in first person or a lot of them anyway. Um, first person uses I. I fought the dragon and then I took a nap. Um, so in first person, the reader knows what the narrator sees and thinks, but doesn't know what anyone else is thinking. So it's all like a very like an internal thing. So it's like the narrator is the, the camera. You know, we only know, you know, what the narrator what's out there in front of the narrator. Um, so it's kind of a, per, it's a really like a personal approach. We, we know that first person narrator really well, far better than we know other characters. Um, second person, this is really not very common at all. It, it's used once in a while to good effect, but mm, I think it's, it's not really standard, I should say. But in second person, the writer or narrator is addressing the reader as if the reader is the main character in the story. But it's very similar to first person in that we still only know what that one character sees and thinks. Okay, and now third person, this is probably the point of view that that is most common, I think, in most adult writing. Um, so, and this uses like she, he, they, right? Um, the narrator doesn't have a presence. So the narrator is kind of like the, the voice that's telling the story, but, but doesn't play a role in the story. So I thought of a way to explain this. I hope this works for you. Imagine an, an invisible person painting a picture. 
So we see the painting develop. We see the different colors go on and the different shapes emerge, but we don't see the hand that's doing it, right? Um, that that's kind of what a what a third person narrator is like. Now that's only like part of the point of view of third person. So there are two kinds of third person point of view, omniscient and limited omniscient. So an omniscient narrator is like God pretty much, knows everything. The thoughts of any or all of the characters, knows the past, knows the future. There's nothing off limits to an omniscient narrator. Now, the, the narrator might not let the reader know everything, but the omniscient narrator certainly knows all of that stuff. Now, limited omniscient narrator knows the thoughts of one character, but not anyone else's. So, um, so in a way, I mean, the, the limited omniscient is... is similar to the first person narrator, um, except we're using, you know, she or he instead of I there. Okay. So now you have all these terms, you have all these ideas. Let's say you have your idea for your story. You're gonna write, you've written something here. You know, how do you feel about it? How do you approach it? So this is what I like to tell students to consider your first draft a play draft. Keep it loose, right? You're just kicking around your ideas, having fun. It's just a starting point. That's all. So have fun with it and let it go kind of. And then, but then you can't just, I mean, let it go completely. You can't just like most of the time anyway, you're not just going to be able to write like one draft and say, well, that's good. I'm done. You know, um, for most of us, it takes revision. Revision is a very essential part of the writing process. And um, revising doesn't mean you're not a good writer. It means you are a good writer. Um, I... Um, revise all the time. I, I know I have writer friends. We're always revising stuff. And I really truly believe that the difference between writers and people who don't write is simply the willingness to revise. I think that everybody has the capacity to be a really good writer, to express themselves, um, to say beautiful and wonderful things. Um, but but for whatever reason, you know, not everybody has that, that, you know, persistence or that drive to keep revising. Um, so and I was just going to say another thing. So um, I wrote a board book not so long ago, and this was a very short book. Um, for, for like really, really little kids, right? So it was like, I don't know, like 150 words. It was really, really short. Um, and, you know, I went through plenty of revisions when I wrote the thing and then I submitted it to my editor. And I think we went through like seven rounds of revisions um, just to, to get that um, very short manuscript finalized. And you know what? That's okay. That's just how it works. So, okay, I want to um, tell you now uh, what I think is a pretty important piece of advice, too. So if you have time, uh, let your story sit for a day or two before you look at it again. And then you're going to be more likely to spot what needs to be changed. So um, I sometimes play like word games on my phone. I'll give Wordle as an example. Um, I don't know if some of you maybe have seen that. Maybe you've seen your parents play it or something. But so we have this word game and I can't quite figure it out. I'm just like racking my brain. I don't get it. I try all these different things. Nothing works. 
Um, but then I'll just leave it. You know, I'll just say, oh, I'm going to deal with it later. And then um, so often I come back to it, you know, like after a few hours, maybe a day or so, I look at it and it's like, oh, oh, the word is lunch. How come I didn't get that? You know, something like that. It's like you, you, you need to like look at it with new eyes, right? And that's what revision means is to see again. Um, so it, it's helpful if you have time to let your story sit for a day or two before looking at it again. Sometimes you don't have time because like if you're writing for school or competitions or something, sometimes it's just, you know, there's too much pressure to get something done and that's okay too. You know, you don't have to do it this way, but, but it is helpful. And I'm just telling you this, maybe it's not something you'll apply now, but maybe in your future writing, you will do that. Um, just let it sit for a bit and, you know, let your brain kind of do its work kind of unconsciously. And um, you might be surprised with what wonderful things you come up with. Okay, but I do have some questions for you to consider. So when you are revising your piece, it's good to just um, be asked to consciously ask these questions, okay? Does your story have a beginning, middle, and end? Now that sounds kind of basic, right? Kind of beginning, but you know, it it's it's a good question. It's a good way to look at a story. You know, we've got the setup of the story, we've got the things that happen in the story, and then we're going to want some kind of a satisfying conclusion, a resolution. You know, the problem of the story needs to be solved in some way, right? Um, so it's just, it's a good way of evaluating, you know, where you stand with your, with the overall structure of your story. Does your main character change in some way? So if your main character goes through all sorts of stuff and, and just, you know, at the end says, oh, well, that was cool. You know, eh, it's not, it's not going to be as satisfying for the reader. The reader wants to kind of grow along with the character. Um, have you included everything the reader needs to know in order to understand what's happening in your story? So that's called grounding the reader. And, and that can be kind of tricky sometimes. Um, have you ever had the situation where, you know, somebody is talking to you and you just can't make heads or tails about what they're talking about, you know? And then all of a sudden, you know, you, you realize, oh, they're talking about that baseball game on Tuesday. Now I get it, you know, that kind of thing. You know, when we're writing, we know all the stuff that's going on, right? But it might not be coming out on the page. You know, we might be kind of auto-filling. Our brains might be auto-filling some of that information. So it's really good to stand back and just say, and just kind of look at it as if you, you're seeing it for the very first time. All you know is what's on the page. Do you have enough information there? Um, another thing to consider is, does everything in your story need to be in your story? Are there things that you could cut? Um, maybe you get on a roll and you are you know, having all this good stuff, um, but maybe your story is getting a little long and maybe you know, the pace is kind of dragging a little bit. Maybe it would be like snappier and the, the reader would be like more engaged in it if you would cut back on some things. That's a possibility. Um, and have you made the best word choices? Now, normally I say, don't worry too much about word choices until you're in kind of the last stages of revision. Um, I think it's more important to deal with you know, your, your plot, your structure first and not get bogged down in individual word choices. But once you get to that point, um, it's good to just go kind of sentence by sentence and say, you know, hmm, can I use a better word there? Should I say dash to the store? Yeah, that would be better than went to the store. Yeah, great. So you, you want words that are gonna um, be as precise and as vivid as possible. Um, 
without overdoing it. Because if you overdo it, then that can be kind of, it, it just sounds awkward too, or distracting too, but you kind of want to find the, the right balance. Okay, so often other people can help you figure out what your story needs to be the best that it can be. So don't be shy. Um, share your work with others and see if they have any questions. In fact, you know, if a bunch of you are getting together and writing work, exchange your pieces and, um, you know, ask each other questions, share your concerns. Um, a good, uh, getting good feedback that people who, who give you advice that helps you make your story better, that's just really um a, a good thing and it's it's fun too okay i think we are near the end here yes we are so you have i'm assuming you have followed this and you have written this great story and you're really proud of it share it with the world <laughs> and way to go good work and i hope that uh that you will keep writing because as i said our voices are important what you have to say is important even if it's a story that didn't really happen in real life that's okay you can express so many things um in in a work of fiction sometimes things come are easier to explain in fiction than they are you know in in nonfiction. so um like i say great Great work. Way to go. And keep writing. Thank you. Bye.